What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, so I'm finally ready to do this top ten ABA players listing. I've been racking my brain with how I want to do this. Um, <clears throat> anybody that follows my channel kind of know that, or at least for a period of years. You know, I kind of re I kind of reward longevity. I'm not one of these guys that generally will rank players very high because they had maybe a two or three year stretch of greatness, then injuries or whatever was the case, um, lack of focus, conditioning, whatever. They just fell off. I don't reward those guys as high as I would a guy who played for 15, 20 seasons, even at an all-star level or a really, you know, above average level, I'd rather rank them higher based upon their body of work and accomplishments and, and, and long level, longevity. I, I, I tend to rank them higher than, say, somebody that played at a high level for three or four years and then for the rest of their, their careers, if it was like eight or nine years, it was so-so. Especially if they don't have the accolades to back it up. Um, but because this is relatively new to me, trying to rank ABA players, this list may be subject to change over the next, hopefully, couple of years um, for me. Because with the NBA, I've been observing basketball for over 30 years now, and I've been trying to rank players in my head for probably at least a quarter of a century. So I have a lot more history with that. And with the ABA, <clears throat> I'm not as... I haven't done it as long. So this listing may be subject to change. just want to put that out there. But this is my, as of right now, top 10 ABA players. And there are going to be some guys missing who you think should be top 10 in the ABA. But at number 10, I have Louis Dampier. And uh, he wasn't exactly, uh, especially for mm, maybe after his first three or four seasons, he, was, he wasn't the most outstanding player. Uh, but he was noted for being the most prolific three-point shooter. And ABA history. He made 794 three-point attempts. And that was back in the 70s. Um, more, Much more than anybody else in the history of that league. He's also one of just two players to play all uh, nine seasons of the ABA. The only other guy being Byron Beck of the Denver Rockets, which were later renamed the Denver Nuggets. Uh, Louis Dampier also played three years in the NBA after the ABA, uh, NBA merger, retiring after the 78-79 season with the San Antonio Spurs. He was inducted into the Naples Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 2015. When you combine his ABA and NBA career, uh, he averaged some, um, let's see if I get his numbers, he averaged 15.9 uh, points. 2.6 rebounds, 4.9 assists. Um, he shot 44% from the floor and 36% uh, from downtown and 82% from the charity strike. But in his ABA career, he averaged 18.9 points, 3.1 rebounds, 5.6 assists, 44% shooting, 36% from the line. Uh, excuse me, 36 percent from downtown and 83 percent from the uh, charity stripe. And when you consider the era that he played in, to shoot 35.8 percent from downtown was pretty good. You know, considering that they didn't shoot that shot with nearly the uh, frequency that they shoot today, and he didn't have as many skilled outside shooters as we do today. Um, as far as his resume is concerned. He is an ABA champion. He won the uh, championship with the Kentucky Colonels in 1975. He was a seven-time ABA All-Star, 
four-time All-ABA second-team player. He was on the All-ABA uh, rookie first team in 1968. He's on the ABA all-time team. And uh, as far as college, he was two-time consensus second-team All-American, 1966 to 1977. D'Ampere was born in Indianapolis, Indiana in 1944 and played at Southport High School, leading the Cardinals to two IHSAA sectional titles and the finals of the IHSAA regionals in 1961-62 uh, and again in 62-63. He also played in the annual All-Star Game featuring the top high school's senior players from both Indiana and Kentucky. During the season, following his senior season, Dampier faced a Kentucky team led by Clem Haskins and Wayne Chapman. Dampier averaged 8.5 points per game as the Indiana team split the series with Kentucky. Dampier was a two-sport athlete at the University of Kentucky, playing baseball as well as basketball. Under uh, coach Adolph Rupp, Dampier, Tommy Cron, and Pat Riley led Rupp's runs to the 1966 NCAA championship game well, they lost to Texas Western College, which is now known as the University of Texas at El Paso. Of course, one of their uh, most famous uh, recruits is Tim Hardaway, a uh, recent Hall of Famer. This game spearheaded the end of the racial segregation in college basketball. During his three years at Kentucky, at the time freshmen were ineligible to play varsity sports, Dampier was a two-time All-American and three-time All-Southeastern Conference selection. He was also named Academic All-SEC twice and Ac Academic All-American once. Upon graduation from Kentucky in 1967, Dampier scored 1,575 points, at the time third most in school history behind only Cotton Nash, who passed away recently. And... Alex Grosser. In 1967, the Cincinnati Royals, now the Sacramento Kings, selected Dampier in the fourth round of the NBA draft, and the Kentucky Colonels selected him in the ABA draft. Dampier eventually signed with the Kentucky Colonels of the fledgling ABA and teamed with Daryl Carrier to form the most explosive backcourt duo in the league. In each of the ABA's first three seasons, both Dampier and Carrier averaged at least 20 points per game. Both were three-point field goal specialists. The ABA had used the three-point field goal from its inception, but especially Dampier, who made 500 during a three-year stretch, a record 199 during the 68-69 season, 198 in 1969-70, and 103 in 1970-71. At the conclusion of the ABA's history, Dampier had made an ABA record 794 three-point field goals. He also finished first all-time in the ABA in games played, 728 minutes played, 27,770, points scored, 13,726, and assists, 4,044. During the 70-71 season, he had 57 consecutive free throws for what was then a pro record in the ABA or NBA. Seven times he was named an ABA All-Star. He was a unanimous choice for the ABA Top 30 team. He played on the Kentucky Colonels 1975 ABA Championship, as I mentioned earlier, which featured a later Kentucky standout, Dan Essel, as well as 7'2 center, Artis Gilmore. After the 76 season, when the ABA merged with the uh, NBA, the Kentucky Colonels ceased to exist and Dampier was selected by the San Antonio Spurs, one of the four teams to join the ABA in the ABA-NBA merger that were originally with the ABA. The other three teams were the um, then New York Nets, who changed to the New Jersey Nets, the Indiana Pacers, and the Denver Nuggets. But Dampier was selected by the Spurs in the 1976 ABA dispersal draft, played mostly as a role player, uh, playing mostly as a role player behind George Gervin, Dampier averaged 6.7 points in 232 NBA games. Louis Dampier, after his retirement, later served as an assistant coach with the Denver Nuggets. 
Um, several divisions in the 21st century semi-pro ABA were initially named after stars of the old ABA, including Dampier. In 2015, Dampier was selected into the Nation Memorial Basketball College Hall of Fame. And uh, Louis Dampier is still alive. He is 78 years old. And uh, he's one of the forgotten shooters in the history of basketball. Um, I mean, what would he be today? I don't know. He was only six feet tall. I think he was six feet tall, about 170 pounds. Um, <clears throat> too small to play shooting guard today. Um, my best guess is that he would be probably a good bench contributor, a really, really good bench contributor in today's NBA. Um, I think he'd be a guy that uh, would mostly be a spot-up shooter, you know, uh, probably really good, you know, pretty decent ball handler, um, really good spot-up shooter, probably a decent clutch performer, you know. The game is just so different now, and... and and I don't know if he would be a star today, um, but you know, especially because of his size. Like um, six feet is pretty small. If he was six foot two, six foot three, then I would say you know maybe he could be a guy averaging fifteen, sixteen points. But I don't know. It's hard to say, man. You never know, man. You can't you can't measure. Everything with size, but anyway, um, anyway, I just wanted to give a little love to Louis Dampier. I think when you look at his longevity, and you look at uh, you know how long he was able to do it, and um, the fact that he played at an All Star level for quite a few seasons, I think that warranted at least a top ten selection. But tell me what you guys think.